Hello, I'm Fei Kwan and you're tuned into It's About Youth. Roaming in our forest is the mighty Malayan tiger, where its population once stood at 3,000 back in the 1950s. However, those numbers have since dwindled, dwindled to less than 150 as of 2022. What are we doing to protect this critically endangered species, a symbol of our national pride? Joining me on the show today is Hazik Harif, the Program Administrator of the Tiger Conservation Program at WWF Malaysia, and Muna Noor, the Conservation Officer of the Malaysian Conservation Alliance for Tigers, otherwise known as MyCat. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining me. Now, I mentioned the Malayan tiger is often is a symbol of national pride, right? It's often featured on our emblems. Um, it's what we use to refer to our national athletes. Hazik, Perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about the Malayan tiger's importance uh, within the wildlife landscape of Malaysia. Yes, uh, you are correct that the Malayan tiger is a symbol of courage and strength. So I guess it resonates with us Malaysian mm -hmm. because we also are brave and you know strength in our troubled times. Yeah. So the importance of Malayan tigers is that um, they are apex predators, so they uh, play a vital role as the main uh, balance checker in the wild. Mm -hmm. So what they do is actually they will ensure that the prey population in the jungle uh, is balanced so that we don't have too many herbivores so that might eat a lot of uh, grass so because any uh, disturbance to the ecosystem, to the cycle, would definitely uh, affect everyone, mm -hmm. us human included. Yeah. So Malayan tigers, uh, red, red, the, the red digit beasts, just uh, being our national icon, it is a very vital and uh, important species in our landscape. And that's yes. where the term apex predator comes as, Correct. as well, yes. right? Uh, but I've mentioned current stats show that their numbers are less than 150 in the wild. Uh, Muna, why do you think youth should be concerned about this? Or more broadly, what impact could the possible extinction of the Malayan tiger have on our environment? Okay, well, as an umbrella species, um, if you were to lose the Malayan tiger, there could be a cascade of events that happen. Um, I think critically, when there's no tiger in the forest, there's perhaps less of a reason to uh, preserve the forest. Mm -hmm. So there is a high chance that you would lose that particular forest because it won't be deemed of like biological value. Um, then secondly, there could be a cascade of events that may lead to uh, ecological collapse. Um, you might not see it happening, um, but it could be happening underneath the surface. Mm -hmm. um, very much like uh, climate change, There's, these small things are happening and eventually cascade into much bigger things. And by the time we realize or act, it could be too late. So all these are going to affect youth because uh, in a way that like, youth will be inheriting these problems. Yeah. Um, and of course, like the forest is of great value to us because it provides all sorts of ecosystem services, you know, like water catchment areas, um, prevents flooding, um, provides food security. So all those things will affect all of us in the future. So a tiger problem is actually a human problem. Mm -hmm. So similar to how all that, there's all that climate anxiety, the tiger is actually a part of that as well. Hazik, anything to add on? Why should youths be concerned about this? Because like I see, uh, tigers are apex predators. If we remove tiger from the landscape, uh, eventually uh, the ugulates, the, the deers, the wild boar uh, will tend to uh, finish all the grassland. So this affects the smaller herbivores uh, like rabbits and uh, whatnot. And then with herbiv the smaller herbivores gone, the smaller uh, carnivores will also be gone because their food is not there. So that's why uh, uh, implying what uh, Muna said, it's really important that we have to save our tigers to ensure that our ecosystem is balanced. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's all a cycle. Yes, correct. Right? Uh, well, we had the National Tiger Action Plan, uh, which aimed to increase our tiger population at that time, to increase the population to 1,000 uh, by 2020. But as we see, it, there's less than 150 now. So what's prevented us, Hazik, from um, achieving, oh sorry, Muna, what's, pre what's prevented us from um, achieving this goal or at least stabilizing the number of our tigers? Okay, well, my cat was uh, very fortunate to be involved in the drafting of that plan. Yeah. Um, it was a very solid plan. I think the important thing is like, it's great to have a plan, but obviously you have to execute it and yeah. see it through. So political will in driving forward that plan is very important. 
However, there are lots of uh, departments involved, and the departments don't just spend federal, they uh, spend state. And of course, like, uh, each will have like, their own different agenda that they're trying to drive. And sometimes those are, uh, so the tiger issue may not be considered vital, or um, they just may be focused on other things. Um, so as a result, perhaps it wasn't driven as hard as it should have been. I think, again, like in hindsight, perhaps there wasn't that urgency. Um, if you watch that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, you have that, I can't remember what it's called, but you have that sense of like the scientists are going crazy, but no one else is. Mm. And so that's very often the case. It's like the conservationists at the forefront and they can see things happening, but trying to convey that message and get other people on board is very, very important. Um, and then also seeing that through. So um, that could have been the impediment. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that science doesn't lie. It, it, you know, these predictions will come true if nothing is done, right? No intervention. Um, besides lack of political will, the human-tiger conflict um, does remain as a threat um, to our tiger population. Hazik, could you tell us a bit more about human-tiger conflict in Malaysia? Yeah. So recently, we have seen an increase of uh, the number of human-tiger conflict. And WWF Malaysia, we are saddened to those are affected uh, the, the families or the loved one were affected because of the tiger conflicts. So uh, human tiger conflict occurs when there is a negative interaction, uh, when the tigers, the wild tigers, actually came into human settlement, mm -hmm. and uh, because the situation, uh, the, the natural habitat are not suitable for them, so they have to venture out and look for other source of uh, food, for example. And recently, there's been several cases where tigers have attacked livestock. So what happened was uh, there was an influx of uh, African swine fever yeah. that uh, demolished or uh, uh, decreased the population of wild boar. And so what happened is the wild boar is actually uh, the, the secondary diet for the Malayan tigers. And why I say secondary is that the main uh, primary diet for the Malayan tigers is actually somebody there. And those numbers are also uh, declining. So because of this uh, African swine fever, uh, more tigers is um, finding harder for food to be around. So they have to get off from their comfort zone, take from their normal habitat to go to human settlement mm. to find food. So this is why there is an increase of um, human tiger conflict. And uh, what we have to do to, to stop or to mitigate is to ensure that there's a holistic approach that uh, could be a win-win situation where we can also uh, conserve tigers, but also make sure that human are safe mm -hmm. and the livestock and property are all safe yeah so it's sudden that you know this is happening but this is reality because you know tiger they require mm -hmm. a large space for them to roam and hunt but uh, due to fragmentation of the forest they're just cutting it smaller and smaller it's harder than it's harder for them to find food so they have to venture out to human settlement mm -hmm. yeah. and that's human so human tiger conflict then uh, should there be any actions they need to prioritize to sort of help foster more of this coexistence or to reduce these interactions between human and tigers? Uh, what, what, what should we really be uh, looking into? Right. Uh, the only possible solution, solution that we can do at the moment is actually just mitigate the interaction between t uh, tigers and human. If we know there's a tiger on the loose uh, near the human settlement, we have to warn the local communities to either uh, put their animal into a paddock where it's safer and do not venture out um, you know, to, to ensure that they are safety. Yeah. Another, way, another way that we can do is actually to build an ecological corridor. So as I mentioned previously, um, the forests are fragmented. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to find a way for that several forests need to be connected via, uh, via uh, a logical corridor where they can move from one forest to another forest to find food. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's what my cat is also doing in your projects. So, mm -hmm. yes, that's one one of the solution that we can do. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, that's one thing my cat's doing. Muna, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so my cat operates in Sungai Yu Ecological Corridor. Um, that was uh, in the Central Forest Fine Master Plan. That is considered like the most important uh, uh, ecological corridor in, Mal in Peninsula Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to protect that uh, area from a strategic point because it actually connects uh, two very large forest area. So that actually provides tigers with more prey species but also with uh, 
more um, potential mates as they can like if they're able to move between the two areas because they have a greater roaming ground. So it connects Tamanagara, which is uh, protected, with uh, Banjaran Titiwangsa. Mm. Um, so by protecting that area, then they have a, a opportunity to cross. Um, so what was actually built in that area uh, several years ago was the Central, for, uh, Central Spine Road. Um, and because it was built through that area, so what my cat has done is apart from conduct uh, protection, we also um, conduct restoration activities. So the area that was denuded uh, because of the uh, building of the infrastructure, so what we do is we do tree planting. Mm. So um, while that area has viaducts that were, I guess, commissioned by the government at a huge cost, which is actually a great initiative and we'd love to see more of it. Uh, it's very important that you can't just, as in that movie Kevin Costner said, <laughs> if you build it, they'll come, but that's not necessarily true. Yeah. You have to actually, um, in addition to building it, you actually have to make it safe and secure. So the mm -hmm. protection work helps to do that. And the restoration work um, actually attracts the animals if you plant the correct uh, kind of trees and provides cover so that they feel safe to cross over. And my cat has been working in that area for a decade. And uh, we're beginning to see like very positive signs um, of um, that area being recolonized by um, mammals that previously were not there. So it's working, but conservation is a long-term effort. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely to hear that. So can we say there is hope to turn the situation around and reverse these numbers? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. There must always be hope. Uh, the alternative of not doing nothing is just unacceptable and I'm sure like uh, youth everywhere feel that. Mm -hmm. Right. I'd like to talk a bit more about measures, but first let's hit for a quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back to It's About Youth, where today we're discussing the critically endangered Malayan tiger and ways to preserve this population. Now, the government has taken several steps to address the dwindling tiger population, one of which is the establishment of the National Tiger Conservation Task Force as of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Has it, how, have, how has this, from your opinion, how has this task force performed so far? Are we on the right track? Mm -hmm. If I can say on behalf of the government, you know, the task force really uh, is working well, or at least it's working to a certain point, because at least more uh, focus from the government, from the central federal government, towards the tiger conservation. So there is an um, awareness uh, from the prime minister that tigers are dwindling, so at least more effort can be done to protect tigers. So there are several approaches that is uh, under the mighty TF. One of them is to protect the habitat, uh, strengthen the laws and increase the boot on the ground. So one of the uh, initiative was uh, is is under called the Biodiversity Protection and Patrolling Program, mm -hmm. where uh, the, it was uh, done together with uh, Department of Wildlife and Natural Park and the Malaysian Police, where they hired um, uh, local indigenous people and veteran army and veteran police to patrol right. those areas. So we have seen an increased number of uh, money been funded to this sort of program mm -hmm. from um, I, if i'm not mistaken in 2021 there's uh, initially it was 20 million but as of this year the 39 million is being pumped to its uh, you know get more people to get more people on the ground so this is actually very good news we can see that government is actually noticing that uh, the tigers are dwelling and they are taking the, the necessary step to ensure that uh, the tigers are protected mm -hmm. and we can actually see the result uh, if you see in our landscape in the revolution we focus on bulum Temenggu forest complex uh, with the joint ampit of uh, bp3 a stampede team uh, we have recorded uh, new cups within our landscape so that's a very good news yeah. even though we, you know we have tiger conflicts but it's very good and exciting news that we can see tiger cups being recorded in our camera trap mm -hmm. when our stampede team uh, go to the forest and set up uh, camera traps 
Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming the, the increasing number of patrollers would also help to Correct. detect the number yes. of snares out Yes, the it would also deter the poachers uh, from coming and also become the eyes and ears to the government. Or if they say something, uh, if they saw something on the ground, they could just quickly relay the message to the government or the relevant agency to stop them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Uh, Muna, anything to add on regarding this? Are there any initiatives you think the government should expand on? Uh, well, I can say that uh, what the state governments do is also important. And it's really right. great to see that members of a royalty are really like leading the charge, mm. um, particularly in Pera and Pahang. Um, it's great to see, I mean, my cat works in Pahang and it's really great to see the crown prince, who is a youth as well, mm -hmm. uh, really driving uh, the protection of tigers. I mean, there was, a, there was a tiger reserve, the first ever in the country that uh, was actually initiated this year. So mm -hmm. that's a very, very positive step and it is really a uh, sign to other states about what really can be done. Mm -hmm. So not just at federal level, at state level as well. And I'll dive a little bit further down into that, into the local communities. But first, Malaysia is not alone in this fight um, to reverse our tiger population. Nepal and India are also among the countries fighting to preserve their tigers. And in fact, Nepal has successfully managed to triple its population of tigers to 355 as of the end of last year. Uh, has it, what lessons can we learn from their conservation efforts? Yeah. Uh, when you point out the my National Tiger Task Force, the idea is actually modelled from the one that was done in India and Nepal. Mm. So if we can see that it works in Nepal and India, so we try to replicate here. And the, I think that uh, political will is a very important thing because if the decision is made from up to bottom, it's easier for us to move around. Mm -hmm. if, and also collaboration between multiple uh, agencies, government agencies from Department of National uh, Wildlife and National Park, uh, police and, ask, and, our, and army, if all of them work together, we can actually combat and turn the conservation of tiger to our favor. Mm -hmm. yes. mm. So political will is really one of the things that's Correct. essential to this. Uh, Muna, coming back to you then, what can local communities do to play their role on um, in protecting our tigers? Okay, so I think Hazik has also outlined like what is being done in the uh, tiger landscapes with uh, local communities. Yeah. Um, we also do that um, in Sungai Yu, but um, I think a lot of us who don't live in uh, tiger uh, landscapes may feel a little bit left out. Mm -hmm. So for the rest of us, it may not be enough to just like like or share something. Um, so that's where my cat's uh, catwalk program comes in. It's aimed at over catwalk eight, program. Yes, <laughs> uh, catwalk as in CAT for Citizen Action for Tigers. Mm -hmm. um, so any citizen from any part of the world, provided that they're above 18 and uh, has uh, able to hike in the forest uh, for short periods of time, they're invited to come along to a catwalk. And what that enables them to do is actually get involved in conservation work. So MyCat facilitates that conservation work. So you can actually roll up your sleeves, go into the forest, uh, you do a walk where it's a protection walk where you're looking for snares and traps. If you find them, you dismantle them and report them. Mm -hmm. If you see illegal activities, when we're in a safe space, we will report them. And we will look out for uh, wildlife signs that we record and all of that it gets mapped out. Um, and we're actually like doing that in uh, hotspots, uh, poaching hotspots. Hot and besides that, as I mentioned, we, you can also do uh, rewilding activities, which is the restoration of the forest. Mm -hmm. So um, that is targeted at uh, young people as well. I know the youth of today are very busy. For example, you might have <laughs> university, you might have internships, you might be raising a family. But all we ask that if you care about wildlife or nature, um, or if you care about climate change, um, just reserve one weekend and come along on a catwalk and uh, learn what happens on the ground. It's really, really eye-opening, even if you don't care about tigers. Uh, like, there's a reason, uh, as we've already explained, like, uh, it, it affects us, even in the city, right? Mm -hmm. There are the um, unintended effects of uh, losing tigers, right? So I would encourage people to come along. Once you learn all those things, those are things that you can apply when you're in the forest again, or you can apply it when you're talking to friends or talking to, like, uh, maybe, like, um, 
other people who might be interested in that. So you can be like an ambassador for tigers without really like uh, spending too much time in the forest or actually living in a tiger habitat. And it comes to spreading awareness, right? And this uh, catwalk is in Pahang, since you mentioned my cat is based there. Yes, so that is in uh, Sungai Yu Ecological Corridor. That's where uh, we operate. It's very near Marapo, and it's just uh, south of uh, Guomusang. Yeah. So if you're coming there, you could take the jungle train and make a whole weekend of it. Mm -hmm. um, or you could... Um, there, it's very famous for karst formations, so you can come and do some rock climbing and caving. So, you know, plan out your week and come for a longer stay. And in addition to doing the catwalk, you can do other things as well. Mm -hmm. And that sounds great, especially for folks in the Klang Valley, <laughs> in this concrete jungle, to go to a real jungle instead. Mm -hmm. uh, has it anything to add on uh, how can local communities do their role to help with uh, protecting our tigers? I think um, the most important thing is to lobby to the government to ensure that the voice for them, because the tigers, basically, they cannot speak for themselves. Right. So the local community, if youth, they need to increase the awareness or lobbies to their MPs to ensure that more money, more uh, food are put on the ground to better conserve the tigers. Mm -hmm. yep. So to hold their MPs accountable uh, to, and to ensure that they take action and prioritize the conservation of our tiger population. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. It's been a pleasure speaking to both of you. I've been talking to Hazik Harif from WWF Malaysia and Muna Noor from My Cat. This has been It's About Youth with me, Fei Kwan. Thanks for watching and see you next time.